Absolutely. And I think this is this is crucial. I mean, you, you every part of the process gives you a unique opportunity to do something. The beginning of the process gives you a unique opportunity to put in the foundation that allows you to challenge at the end any procedural error, um, roughshodding, overriding, or just plain, plain corruption, right? So you could say in your in part of your allocution would be, Your Honor, I filed this this notice way back when. Did did you read it? You know? So you use the content of the notice against him again. Mm-hmm. Or they just dismiss it. So anyway, the first thing you'll find is uh and I want everybody to, to read the general overview and instructions. There's um, a caveat right at the front, which basically says you better not use this document unless you know who you are. And by that, I mean, do you know that you're a tribunal of uh, mind, body, and spirit? Because this whole document is written, written around that concept. So if you don't understand that, they're going to roast you, and there's no doubt about that. So read the general overview. Then there's the the caveat is in there. Then there's a strategy. Then there's specific instructions on how to do it, you know. Then the the next thing you want to do is read Rob Ryder's uh, expose, The Court Exposed, which is inside the package. That is a must read because half of this notice is written based on his his uh, expose. So you better you he did a great, everything. Did a great job, didn't he? <clears throat> yes, he did. Absolutely. And there's a lot of history in there. Uh, I had to read it three times so I could pluck out what I needed to do this uh, this notice, you know. <clears throat> and there's um, there's two documents that are um, annexed as exhibits. The first exhibit would be the color print of your LIBOR record. And the second one is the the hearing, the notice, the first page, whatever it is, indictment, with uh, the deed of restitutum glued to the back, properly filled out, stuff like that. So don't use blood. I, I indicate use red ink. Then, um, <clears throat> Fill out the um, fill out the the notice. The notice is written in standard court format. All you have to do is find out how the header is done, change that, change everything that's highlighted in yellow, and it should work for you. But you have to get it in before the hearing. So that's important. Now let me um, now. I call this thing. Uh, Gerald and I went over and over this a couple of days, and he says, you can't use petition. Well, I thought petition was a benign word until we really got into it, and it's not a benign word. It's um, basically begging there, begging the court to do something, and, and you don't want to do that. So the name of this document is Notice to Court of Mistaken Identity and Order to Dismiss Cause with Prejudice. Okay, the mistaken identity is every time they send you something, it's in capital letters. That's considered a person, a corporate fiction. It is not you. It is not the tribunal. So I thought it was clever. I finally figured out, well, hey, it's a mistaken identity. It's something they can hang their hat on, right? Well, I think that's, I think you just hit on something. Do you mind, sorry to interrupt. Um, sure, go ahead. A great job there. But something we've said in the last, few talk shoes and and we want to we want to actually keep emphasizing here a must one of the one of the many mistakes and we're using the word mistake here one of the many mistakes that we've been doing people have been doing is setting up an adversarial type uh, arrangement where they give no opportunity for the court to save face mm-hmm. and when you do that you give them no choice but to throw the book at you, right? Right. Mistaken identity is something that the court 
has plenty of room to go down and, and deal with and deal honourably without it becoming, you know, over in their mind, overwhelmingly public knowledge. Yeah? Mistaken identity gives them plenty of scope to say, Oh look, we made a mistake, you know, we you know, and, and, and if you hear it over the time, you hear it when people call you, oh, I'm sorry I made a mistake. I think it's very important that this package gives the court the opportunity to exit honourably, uh, even though you know they've may have arrested you, may have imprisoned you, may have caused great angst. You know, give them the chance to settle it, and that right. way you increase your odds. Yeah. Yeah. This is a this is a an easy one. You're not even challenging, you know, territorial jurisdiction, which there's tons of case law on it, and they rule against you anyway. But mistaken identity, that's kind of easy. So we have the introductory paragraph, then uh, consent in our will, that's uh, section one. And then pronouncement of un unalienable rights. I, I, I put that in there, Frank, because we failed to tell these people where our rights come from, okay? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're given to us by the divine creator. Not by them, so I, I try to make that distinction. So then, uh, then acceptance of oath and office and bond, and then the venue, the jurisdiction, order to dismiss. Then I get into the court of conscience, and then uh, a prayer for divine guidance, and then it's over. It's uh, six pages total. So I have everybody go look at it, and I. I hope everybody uses it when they need to. Hmm. Well, I really appreciate, again, Ron, what you're doing. And I, I put out a thanks at the start of the call for what you're doing and for Greg and for many others that uh, I haven't named that are all contributing to it. And I really appreciate it. We, we, the whole idea of what we're doing is to help people as a community. This is, not, this is about helping each other. Um, and it's about overcoming what they do which is they want us all to be islands they want us to be separated they want us to be isolated they want us because then they pick us off but right. uh this is helping this is helping people realize that 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 you know behaving honorably and respectfully and competently doesn't simply mean that you uh you know bravely going into the valley of death it actually does mean that ultimately it improves your odds of overcoming what you're dealing with so Thanks again, Ron, for what you're doing. And um, one last thing, uh, Frank. Yep. Greg and uh, Gerald are working on the allocution, which will attach to this package, or maybe it'll go into the, the separate package, but you will use that at the tail end of the trial and at sentencing. So mm -hmm. they'll explain all that, but right now we needed to get the front part done. No, it's great. Yep. Ron, thank you. And I know that many people who are listening now and who will listen later appreciate everything you're doing so thanks again well thank you frank yes th thank you ron thank you all right uh frank another question from the chat and just as a reminder for callers if you press star eight if you'd like to ask a question i'll put you in the question and answer queue and we can unmute you so you can ask your question all right uh the next question is uh, I have great records of birth of all my departed elders. Is there an advantage to record them all in Acadia? Um, so they've got good records, but what was the last bit of that? But um, they're, they're of the departed uh, elders of their clan or family. And yep. the question was, is there an advantage to record them all in Acadia? Well, there is. I mean, there's there's a number of advantages. Um, they are injured parties to the present system's use of trust and claiming of our spiritual energy as well as our physical energy. So when you register them, you are able to act as their party in bringing forward aspects of injury and redress you are also by having them registered 
effectively calling on your ancestors to become a active party in the change and in the development of the money system uh, you are able to support your community and the reality of the financial by ensuring that the divine spirits and there are a hundred divine spirits that underwrite every supreme credit that the underwriting as the society emerges is underwriting with real conscious uh, spiritual energy and not merely the overriding statement that all people are you know, all, all, all departed are members which you've heard me say before it's much stronger when that is able to be supported by saying the hundred members of the Collins clan or O'Collins clan are part of the financial support for uh, United Australia and for the Oceanic Union. I'm not saying that if you put them in that you get some golden, you know, supreme credit. And I know that that would be the first thing that people think of. Well, if I'm putting them in, don't can't I claim their energy for myself? No. You're, you are when you do register a ancestor you're doing three things one you're honoring them two you're calling on them to become an interested party in this because they are in fact an interested party because currently the other systems claiming them and three uh, you are uh, in that agreement allowing that energy that they have to be directed towards the success of your society so it is a very honorable thing to do it still needs the interface to be ready and I've been asked for an interface for, for quite some time and again I'm sorry it's not there yet but um, apart from the interface being ready I think I've answered or I feel I've answered uh, the benefits of having your ancestors recorded in Eucadia one heaven Very good, Frank. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, V here has a question, and it looks like it's possibly a question. I may be wrong, so uh, pardon me if, if I'm wrong. And there, hmm. uh, during Ron's discussion about the court process, the question is asked about standing as uh, in propia persona, as your own person or as your as his own person. And, himself as a defendant appeared in propria persona uh, <clears throat> and not as the uh, item sonans or item sonans. Yeah, I think this is, look, we've, 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 we've discussed this. It's the same as, for example, trying to challenge in America. You have the uh, uh, in Bene SA um, challenge, which is effectively to say, prove to me that you have jurisdiction. I think what we've seen in um, in uh, court cases around the world, remembering that things are tightening all the time in their system, they're not loosening, they're getting tighter, is that there's almost no consideration of the aspect of jurisdiction occurring. If it does occur, it occurs as a rarity as opposed to a norm. In other words, you can jump up and down and say what you like. The court is going to roll right over you on the jurisdiction issue. So you should, as a matter of right, uh, demonstrate non-consent, demonstrate uh, to the court that you have no jurisdiction, demonstrate in the, in the um uh, process of plea that you do not contract and that you uh, uh, seek demurra but the reality is that the courts are rolling right over the top of that so I, I don't believe there is any benefit in in trying to dwell too much beyond uh, that because the courts are not going to entertain it so in that basis there's no real benefit going down the, the, the question of saying you know, um, in Latin, whether you know I am the uh, party that is uh, the the matter, or even the question of uh, there is no injured party. Um, as I say, the courts are ignoring all of that. So what Ron's doing, and what 
Greg and others are doing in, 